Hey now, Deadheads, we are back again with the second half of our Record Store Day Black Friday haul from this year, from 2022. And that is not the Lyceum box, but it is Wembley Empire Pool. Uh, a couple of y'all noticed that on the last video I did, I called this an, a Lyceum box. Um, too much Lyceum this year already. I, we have that, that four show set that came out earlier this year. Made a video about that one. But this is not the Lyceum. Uh, this is actually the other bookend of the Europe 72 tour, which is Wembley Empire Pool. And actually the first night at Wembley Empire Pool on um, April 7th, 1972, kicking things off on the Europe 72 tour. And so an interesting comparison. And that's what I kind of want to explore and talk about today um, is the, the journey that one goes on when comparing the Wembley Empire Pool release to, you see on the other hand, this is the last night of the Europe 72 run, which is at the Lyceum Theater. Um, before I get into this though, one quick correction that I want to issue. Last video, uh, I showed off that Pure Jerry box set, that Hampton um, Coliseum box set. Um, very, very great stuff, but I, I said it was illustrated by Graham Arrington. It's Graham Yarrington, Yar Yarrington uh, with a Y. Uh, so I want to make sure that the credit is going where credit is due for Graham. Um, so beautiful box set. want to make sure that he's getting the recognition that he deserves. Uh, but then when we get into our Wembley Empire pool box, uh, let me give you a little walkthrough of what's inside. You can see we have some quick liner notes. Uh, on the first side, we have an essay from Gary Lambert. And on the other side, we have... Uh, a quick little uh, scene-setting essay from David Lemieux, written in June of this year. And then if we look at, and then when we look at the sleeves, they should look quite familiar. Uh, you can see that we have the illustration continued throughout, the rainbow motif. And if we zoom in, you can see the grid pattern of a, a sort of blotter paper type pattern. Uh, now, this is different from the checkerboard pattern of the original Europe 72 motif uh, that, that Stanley Mouse, I think it was actually Mouse and Kelly design that they did for Europe 72. Uh, the artist who, who created all of these, I think these designs started with the trunk, the CD box set, adapted it to be this kind of blotter paper motif. Pretty cool stuff. And you can see the, the rainbow across all of these. And you can see this isn't an outer sleeve, inner sleeves type of situation. It's just this uh, designed sleeve is, that's the only sleeve we get. So I guess it, that's the inner sleeve here. And if we look on the back, you can see the track list made in Germany, how appropriate for our Europe 72 run um, and our, our track listing as well. Couple interesting facts about this this box set. It's actually a little bit short. You'll notice um, the big box man actually cuts out a little bit early, and uh, there's a a missing Casey Jones that was performed on this first night at the Wembley Empire Pool, but not not recorded. It's not contained in this box set. Um, quite interesting because when we think about the Europe '72 complete edition, not the the album that came out 50 years ago, but the complete edition, uh, the CD box set, the trunk, and what we're seeing now in these record store releases, the Lyceum box set, we think of it as complete, a complete record of the Europe 72 run, but, you know, there's human errors along the way. I think it was about 22 shows. You're bound to make a couple mistakes. You're bound to forget to flip the tape, change the tape over, and so we see one of the few errors in the Europe 72 run contained on this. Um, interesting little you know tidbit there. Interesting that it's left out. And I think speaks to the fact that this was the first show of the Europe 72 run. You gotta work those kinks out. You gotta, you gotta figure out some processes along the way before you repeat them uh, time and time again over the course or, or, or while navigating the European continent and then coming back to England. Another interesting piece, um, and, and this is something I wanted to explore with, with this release, is listening to the recording. And it, you know, there's 
audio file discussions or, or music listening discussions that can be had about listening to the music versus listening to the recording and the merits of both or the, the nerdery of both. But you really do notice a difference between listening to this, this first recording at the Wembley Empire Pool, put that aside, and listening to this recording at the Lyceum. Um, the, the gear didn't really change, the crew didn't really change, it was you know, the same people and processes, but you notice better instrument separation on the, the later box set, the, the later show's box set at the Lyceum than you do at the Wembley Empire Pool. And at first I was thinking, is this quality control? Are they putting out a subpar product for Record Store Day compared to the, the massive and, and quite expensive Lyceum complete run box set? And, you know, I dug around on the internet a little bit. I was trying to find some explanation because it's, it's a little bit duller. And then I started looking at some photos. I looked at some photos of these venues. You compare the, the cavernous, massive Wembley Empire pool. You know, it's, it almost looks like Winterland on steroids. And I don't even know if it's bigger than Winterland, but it just looks so much more cavernous than Winterland. Even modern iterations, once they change the name of the Wembley Empire pool, it just doesn't, it doesn't look like an amphitheater. It doesn't look like a concert hall. When you look at photos of the Lyceum Theater, it's a theater, and it sounds like a theater. It has the acoustics of a theater. And so you get you know, better sound, a better recording, less muddiness, less muffledness together of sound bouncing off of the ceilings, the walls, the concrete floor of the Wembley Empire Pool when you play it in a proper theater. And so it's it really lends itself to the anthropological nature of listening to The Grateful Dead and listening to different eras of The Grateful Dead. It's not just, you know, different guitars played by Jerry, whether it's, uh, you know, Alligator, Wolf, Rosebud, what have you. It's not just, you know, the changes in the lineup, whether you're going from the Pigpen era to the God Show era uh, to the Midland era. Uh, but it's, you know, they're playing the venue. That is part of the band. That's part of playing in the band for The Grateful Dead. You really hear the differences between these concert halls and these different venues. That anthropological nature is, is what really brings you into the experience. You know, if you dial it in just right, you've got the gear just right, you've got the recording just right, and you've got your headspace just right, you really listen to the room. You listen to uh, that the, the, the full performance and not just how the band is playing, but how the room is playing. Uh, and it, that difference is really noticeable in you know the I think it's about a month and a half between these two recordings, but the gear's the same, the band's the same, the recording's the same, the recording crew is the same, but the room is different. And so if you want to listen to the differences in the room, I, I listened to the sugary on this Wembley Empire pool box and the sugary on the last night of the Lyceum Theater run, and you really hear and feel the difference. It's not just comfort and getting over the jet lag, but it's the differences in the room and I think that's that's quite enjoyable it's quite you know quite an experience to have and I think that's something that keeps me coming back time and time again to the Grateful Dead and listening to the same songs time and time again whether it's the difference between you know one London venue and another London venue or uh, tracing you know the Grateful Dead through the the Northeast in May of 1977 it's these journeys that it takes you on is, is really quite spectacular and for me what makes it interesting? What keeps me coming back? And so thank you. That's that's my spiel. I might have gone a little bit long today talking about uh, the Grateful Dead at the Wembley Empire Pool, part of this you know, continuing release series of Europe 72 shows as, as part of Record Store Day. Um, we've got a few more releases coming up in the next couple months. You know, the uh, Jerry Garcia, um, Garcia album, pressed a, for the first time a 2LP edition and not you know, 45 RPM audio file, but uh, you, you get the second LP is some bonus content, uh, some outtakes, some explorations, some sketches uh, that went into the first LP, the the actual eventual album that's on on gold vinyl. Excited to show you show that to you next. That'll be the next video, and we've got Bob Weir Ace 50, and then uh, I want to have a little bit of a, an exploration and discussion about what to expect in 19. Sorry, in 
2023. Um, got tripped up a little bit. We've got our 1973 50th anniversary editions coming out soon, as well as some new stuff. Um, we've got some rumors along the way, just all sorts of stuff coming up. Uh, some stuff that Dave's hinted at while while giving his seaside chats and 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 so on. So uh, expect that before the year is up as well. Um, Thank you guys very much for joining me today. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I am excited to keep growing this community of uh, Grateful Dead fans and deadheads who are spinning lots of vinyl and uh, interested in, in all of these new vinyl releases. Uh, so thank you guys very much for joining me once again. Peace. Have a good one.